Mark, good morning. Can you hear me? Morning, Godfrey. I can hear you perfectly. Thank you. Sure. If, since you're talking to us in Johannesburg, you do business in places which are far more difficult to get through. Tell us, how do you do it? Um, Godfrey, I think there's a. Um, I think the bottom line is it's very important that we appreciate as miners that we're mining a national asset, and I think government needs to appreciate that as well. And if you can build that partnership between ourselves as capitalists and uh, the government and the people of that country, I think you can, and as we've shown you, you can make um, returns for everyone. Mm. Is there any particular strategy that you follow when you go in the countries where you're going? Because I'm looking at the diverse, uh, uh, the, 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 the different number of countries that you guys go into, and I find you certainly in uh, all of them, the rules, the regulations are way different in each and every country. Yeah, I think that's a very important point you make. It's, it's you know, if you're going to play a game of any type of um, activity, you need to know the rules. And uh, that's the, I think the first step is to understand the rules. The second step is, and we're very clear about this, is not to get um, seduced into facilitation and bribery. Um, that always complicates the matter. And the third is uh, to ensure that you have an economically viable project. And I think, again, uh, in many, many um, situations, Miners are, are not really miners. There's no intention to uh, develop a mine for long-term profits and long-term sustainability, and people are more promotional. And we've uh, always had as our um, mantra uh, to be profitable. Mm. Talk to us about that, Mark, because the perception has always been that to be able to do business in Africa, you have to grease a few palms. I mean, we have many examples of businessmen who have gone into Africa and uh, have had uh, stories following them all the way through. I can think of uh, immediately uh, the travails that uh, Strive Masiwa and his Econet Wireless business encountered in Nigeria. Yeah, we, we, very, we have a very simple approach, Godfrey. We don't pay bribes. And... You know, we've, we've operated and do operate in countries that have often uh, been referred to as difficult to work in because of bribery. But we just have a, a simple philosophy. We arrive, when we arrive in a country, we meet with the president and the senior executive politicians, and we explain to them this is the rules, and they explain to us usually a couple of rules, and, and we get on with business. And, uh, you know, bribery is a... Is a, a, a a, a tragic thing in Africa. It, it doesn't uh, win anyone any any benefits, and um, it uh, confuses people about what makes money. Mm. Have you encountered it? Um, we've never directly encountered, you know, an open uh, solicitation of bribery. I think there's many times people get caught into uh, caught up in in facilitation or bribery because of the bureaucratic process, and and a lot of it is because. Some of the countries that we operate in don't have the capacity to deal with some of these big investment projects. Mm. We'll come so back things to take a lot slower and people get very frustrated and they think if they grease a few palms, as you suggest, uh, it'll make things better and it never really does. It doesn't, surely, because everybody else would want to be paid as well. Let's bring in Vikas <laughs> Murray here into the conversation. Vikas, do investors give companies like uh, Rand Gold Resources that go into very difficult operating environments more leeway in terms of uh, the rules and regulations and the ethics of uh, business when they go into those nations? Um, I think the, the very important thing, again, is if you, if you neglect the law of the land in which you're investing, you open yourself up to extortion. So we don't. Uh, you know, there are many... I mean, we have a, a very clear set of rules that we manage our risk with or against. And uh, when you go into these countries, you need to be sure that you are squeaky clean as far as the regulations and, and various tax laws, etc., um, as they relate to, to mining. And then you can deal with uh, any of the issues that arise as you, as you develop the country. I think the, the com company or the, the project, I think the most important thing coming back to investing in, in Africa is to ensure that you have a project that's economically viable. And a lot of people don't do proper bankable feasibility studies, proper um, baseline studies, public participation proceeds, uh, proceeds where, where you get involved in or you get the community involved in your project. And so you, you really
really a lot of uh, the failures in Africa are because one, the, the project uh, fundamentally is not economic, and the other is that uh, the the industry fails to involve the community and the government mm. in the realities of mining. Right. Indeed. Mark Brister, CEO of uh, Run Gold Resources, will have to hold this conversation another time. Definitely, there's much, much, much more to talk about.